one of the things of the, the Sunan is that there's, there's what is called tadarraj fi kashf al mahna that the, 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 the tribulation comes, it will be removed in stages. It's not always removed immediately. It's, it's when you have a, one of the things about healing, when you have a wound or something like that, it heals over time. And, and each stage is important. There's, there's people that have like, if they get a cut and then they get the scab, they want to pull the scab off. But the scab is necessary for the, the wound because there's, it's, it's granulating underneath that scab. There's new, new flesh that's coming. And so if you pull it off, you're going to scar it. You're not allowing the, 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 the natural process of healing. You're trying to hasten something. And that's one of the things that من استعجل الأمر دون أوانه عوقب بحرمانه تقاعد الفقهية but it can be used for a lot of things that if you try to hasten something that's not meant to come yet then you're deprived of that very thing that you're trying to hasten the example they always give in the books of Usul is من من قتل والده حرم من الوراثة that if you kill your father you don't get the inheritance you know, just, you, you have to wait. There's people that, that, they're waiting for the inheritance, but you can't hasten it. If you do, then you're deprived of it. The same is true for, like this coup was an attempt to hasten something that will naturally happen. No government lasts forever. No ruler lasts forever. Everybody has to die. But you don't have the permission to try to hasten something. This is one of the things that happen in the Muslim world with the revolts against a lot of these rulers. And I know there's difference of opinion about that, but the dominant Sunni tradition is tahrim al-khuruj al al-hakim. And people get very angry when you say that now because they're Marxists. There are only Marxist Muslims out there. But it's just Marxism. If you know where a lot of the modern political uh, ideologies in the Muslim world came from, if you know history and you know Marxism, then you'll see where they came from. They're Marxist ideas that were introduced into the Islamic discourse. And that happens. There's a lot of Greek ideas that came into the Islamic discourse. Some of them were good, some of them were negative. Marxism is not all evil. There was some very positive aspects to Marxism. It wouldn't have caught on like it did if there wasn't a lot of truth in it. But there were other aspects of it. The end justifies the means that people don't count, what counts is, is the goal, and that people are reified, there's this idea, something called humanity that doesn't exist. Humanity is aggregate of individuals, and, and if you think people are just pawns in your game, that we can eliminate all these people for some greater good, you can kill 5,000 Iraqi children and consider it an acceptable, like, Madeline Albright, when she was asked, do you think that's an acceptable price to pay for, to achieve your goals? Yes, we do. And, and that's how they calculate things like collateral damage, which is, collateral damage is a nice way of saying innocent people got killed. That's what it is. So they, they take into consideration, if we bomb this place, we're probably going to kill 10,000 civilians. Is that worth the objective? They say yes. Sharia says no. <laughs> you can't kill innocent people for some greater good because the end doesn't justify the means. The means have to be consistent with the end. If it's a noble end, it has to have noble means. And that, that's a very different world, but it's a, it's a noble world and it's a world of chivalry and, and, and a different world that, that the modern world has. The ancients just had a different concept of it. And you can read the Iliad to see that. The Iliad, they were, they were horrified by it, even though there are very horrible things in there and they had different concepts of morality. But they definitely had an idea that warriors should fight on battlefields and fight in noble ways. And so if Allah wants to just remove that difficulty immediately, he can do it. But it tends to be through this, this slow tadarruj. And then he says, وَسَحَابَ الْخَيْرِ لَهُ مَطَرٌ 
That goodness, the clouds of goodness have rain in them. And when the time comes, that rain will fall. So those are what are called the muqaddarat, al ilahiyya That everything is in the taqdeer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything, Allah knows the appropriate times for things. And we don't necessarily know what is good for us. And that's why istikhara is so important because what istikhara is doing is it's telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's asking Allah to choose for you what is good. Yastakhiru means to seek the khayr. Istikhara means to seek the khayr from Allah. The word in Arabic, akhtara yakhtaru, to choose, means to choose good. And Allah is the one who knows what's good for you, which is why people ask, people tell me, somebody called me a little while ago and said, I'm really trying to get this job. I've got this great deal that's going to come through. Would you make dua that it comes through? And I said, if it's good for you, may Allah make it happen. I'm not, I'm not, maybe it's a bad thing for the person. That's what istikhara is. Maybe the job's not a good thing for you. Maybe it's the worst thing. Maybe it'll lead to all these disasters. There's a saying that says that more tears have been shed over answered prayers than unanswered ones. <laughs> you know, there's people, I have to marry this person. Even though everything is, is lined up against that happening, no, I have to marry this person. Maybe you don't have to marry them. Maybe it'll be the worst thing for you. Maybe you should take those signs seriously that everything's against it. I mean, I have a friend who were, was very much in love with this person, and they were in love with them. And, and this person was very dark, and the family was from, I think, a racist Muslim family. And they, they wouldn't uh, let the daughter marry him because of the color of his skin. And she just said, I don't want to destroy my family and break off. So they broke it off. He ended up getting this incredible wife. And he told me that he just said, SubhanAllah, what came from that, because he accepted something. So a lot of it is just people accepting what's coming uh, to them and recognizing that not everything is, is good, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's good. Because everything is done with a qadr. The Prophet sallallahu said, Kullu shay'in bi qadrin hatta al-ajzi wal case. Everything is proportioned out. Even energy and the lack thereof. Like, I wish I had more energy. To, to do, I would like to do other things, but I'll, you have a certain amount of energy Allah gives you. You see certain people that they only need, there's a gene that you only need two hours of sleep. There are people that have that gene. It's, it's been proven. So they get two hours of sleep and then they have 22 hours. <laughs> and they feel just as good as everybody else who has needs seven hours. That's amazing. That's from Allah. That person, hopefully they'll spend it in useful things. But then also, uh, Iblis doesn't need any sleep. <laughs> There's a lot of people that don't need sleep. I always get worried when they say the CEO says he only sleeps an hour a night or something like that, because that's like Iblis. <laughs> right? The Prophet said, Qiru fi inna shayateen la yaqirun. Take a nap in the daytime because the shayateen don't take naps. And all the countries that have siesta, look at the difference. You know, countries that take naps in the afternoon, they're like not invading other countries. And <laughs> it's very interesting. They're all nice people and relaxed and have tea, be happy. And then these countries where they don't sleep in the afternoon. <laughs> They're doing horrible things all over the planet. 